Rabbi Singer said a couple of times that Noahites are part of the Jewish faith, but just haven't converted yet. Would you mind clarifying when we are supposed to convert before or after Messiah arrives? Right. Great question. So I want to be very clear. The word Noahide is an anachronism, and it's unfortunate because no one knows what that is. A Noahide means that your faith is Judaism. It's really very simple. It's, it's really not complicated at all. Your faith is Judaism. Now, there are two stages that you can convert to Judaism. Every Noahide is a convert to Judaism, which means that your faith is Judaism, is the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's really that simple. However, the nation of Israel is also a people. That means Judea the Jews are, Judaism is a religion, but it's also the Jews are a people. It's called an ethno-religious group. There's almost nothing else like that in the world. There's almost no other ethno-religious group in the world where the Jews are because we're also a nation. Christians are not a nation. Muslims are not a nation. All right. So therefore, when a person says, I'm an Ochai, what they really should say is that I, my faith is Judaism. However, I have not joined the nation. And that's what, when we use, see, we're using words, but we have to really unpack what they mean. Is Converting to Judaism does not really mean that. It means joining the Jewish nation. That's how it would properly be said. And Noahide really means the Jewish faith is my faith. Okay? My faith is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, is Judaism, not Noahide. You can use it because it helps people who know, but people who don't know go, what's Noahide? That's some weird, no. Noahide is the oldest religion in the world. <laughs> Abraham wasn't called a Jew, he was a Noahide. And Noah certainly was a Noahide, right? This is really simple. So unfortunately, we're using unusual language and we really should use more precise language. When someone embraces the Jewish faith as, the, as her faith, Judaism is her faith. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is your faith. That's all. We don't even need the word Noahide. However, there's something else you may feel compelled to do, and that is to actually join the Jewish nation. And that's what we call conversion. That's what we call gerus. Now, one other caveat, it's a messianic prophecy that when the Messiah is coming in that period, there'll be a tremendous amount of converts to Judaism. It literally tells us that in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. Okay? There'll be a, just a mass of people who will join the Jewish faith and just look around you. And this is not weird stuff. This did not go on 100 years ago. It doesn't mean there weren't any converts. There were. It was unusual. Today, it's hard to get into a conversion program. Today, people are breaking the door down to convert. They are. It's, very, it's not even simple. Thousands of people around the world want to convert. And if they would say anybody can convert, there would be millions of people that want to be Jewish. That's what's happening now. And this is a sign of the Messianic age. Now the question for you personally is, do you feel that calling? And if you do, you should pursue it. You have to feel a calling to join the Jewish nation. That's what it means. If you have that calling, you should pursue it. Bear in mind that the rabbi's job is to make sure to protect you and to make sure that you're never going to leave and sin and go back to not keeping Shabbos. Because right now, if a person is not joined the Jewish nation, they don't have to keep the Sabbath. They can drive on Friday night. They don't have to eat kosher. They don't have to do any of those things. Okay? They don't have to do those keep those commitments. They can, 
They can ritually keep them if they want to. When it comes to the Sabbath and Jewish holidays, they should just be aware that a person, if a person doesn't feel like working on Saturday, who's not converted, they don't have no one's. You don't have to work on Saturday. You just don't say. I know there's a lot of different views of this, but I want to. This is my view, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm right here. <laughs> just don't say that Shabbos was given to the nations of the world. It's a unique gift for the Jewish people, but I don't. If you don't want to, you don't have to. You can, you want to. But here's the key. Once you join the Jewish nation, you can't undo that. You can't, just like if you join a race, you can't undo your race. Once you join the Jewish nation, it's irreversible. So right now, if you have a person who's a Ben Noach, who, you know, eats whatever he wants or whatever, does whatever she wants on Shabbos, you know, with... So it's no sin. If a rabbi converts you and then five years later you change your mind, now the rabbi's produced a sinner, right? So what I want to explain is that in that process where you want to convert, please understand that your interests and the rabbi's interests are not the same. Your interest is conversion. Just make sure everything's okay. Don't blow up your family over it. Don't destroy your marriage over it. But So your job is to move ahead with that. If you feel that calling, that I must be a member of the nation of Israel, the rabbi's job is just to protect you, to make sure that this is not a passing feeling and in three years you go, I don't want to. Let's say you join the Jewish nation and you're living in Geneva and you are angry with a Jew. <laughs> you get into a fight with the rabbi. Who knows? Things happen, right? And someone goes, well, I'm, forget it. I'm out of here. Well, you can't be out of here. You understand? So the rabbi wants to make sure that you're, it's not that you're sincere, but you possess the spiritual maturity and understanding and that this is not some, because the conversion really only takes 20 minutes, right? Really, the take long. The reason why it takes years is the rabbi wants to make sure you're integrated. He's trying to protect you from doing something that can harm you later. The worst thing you could do is convert to Judaism, and then go to a sinful life. Then he's created a sinner. So, your interest, if you want to join the Jewish nation, if you, if you're a Noachai, that means you are Jewish in your faith. I'm using words in an unconventional way, but this is the correct way. All Noahides are of the Jewish faith. They're just not of the Jewish nation as far as they know, which brings me to the next part. If you want to be a Jew, it's always a good idea to investigate your genealogy and so on. We have methods available that that should never stop. So if you want to join the Jewish nation, that's what— the Garrett means. So there, you you should move ahead. Again, don't destroy your family over it. Don't destroy your marriage, your kids. Don't go crazy. Take it easy. <laughs> and recognize that the rabbi really wants to get to know you. One other thing. Just one other thing. If you go to a synagogue, don't tell them you want to convert right away. Because they won't, because joining a synagogue and then converting, that's like getting married. It's huge. So just go and enjoy, get to know the rabbi, the congregation, see what's going on. Maybe you like a different congregation. You like a different, some people just hit you the right way, and, and that's fine. Because if people I know, like, call the synagogue and go, I want to convert. So, like, going into a synagogue or calling a synagogue and saying, I want to convert, is roughly the equivalent of going out on a date and saying, hi, I want to get married. Well, it's not that the person you're dating is not interested in getting married, but it's way, whoa, let's just get to know each other. So, just get to know each other, go to a synagogue, enjoy it, learn about it, learn, and as time goes on, you can, if you feel so called, have the discussion with whoever in time. Take your time about it.